This is part 70 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing login functionality in ASP.NET Core using the Identity API. To implement the login functionality, we need three things. Login view model, the login view itself, and then a pair of login actions. A login action that responds to HTTP GET and displays the login view to the user and then another login action that responds to HTTP POST when the login view is submitted by clicking the login button. We create these two login actions within the account controller. Our first step is to create the login view model. To be able to log in a user, we need three pieces of information. In our example, we're using email as the username. So within the login view model, we need a property for email. Notice we are using required and email address attributes on the email property for model validation. We discussed model validation in detail in our previous videos in the series. To be able to log in a user in addition to their email, which in our case is the username, we also need their password and remember me boolean property. As the name implies, this boolean property is for the remember me checkbox that we see on the login page of most web applications. If the checkbox is checked, then we create a persistent cookie, otherwise we create a session cookie. We'll discuss the difference in just a bit. But before that, let's create this login view model class with these three properties. Let's place login view model in this view models folder. Right click, add, new item. We want to add a class and let's name it login view model. Inside this class, we need the three properties, email, password, and remember me that we have seen on the slide just now. There's nothing new with this view model class. We already discussed view models in detail in our previous videos in this series. So in the interest of time, I'm going to paste the required code instead of typing everything by hand. We are missing the required namespace for these validation attributes. That's the reason we see all these red squiggly lines. Let's bring in the required data annotations namespace by pressing control period. Our next step is to create the login view itself. And for the login view, this class login view model will be the model. And we want to place the login view in the account subfolder in the views folder. So right click, add new item. We want to add a razor view and let's name it login. The model for this view is our login view model. Next, let's set the page title using view bag. The property that we'll use is title and let's set it to user login. Using an h1 element, let's display the text user login on the page. Finally, we need HTML input elements for email, password, and remember me checkbox. Again, there's nothing new in this login view that we haven't discussed in our previous videos in the series. So in the interest of time, I'm going to paste the required HTML and walk you through it. We are using Bootstrap 4 to style this login view. So all these styling classes, row, column D12, text danger, form group, our bootstrap for classes. When this form is submitted, we want to issue a post request to log in the user. So we have set the form element method attribute to post. To display any validation errors we might have, we are using the validation summary tag helper. And then inside this div, we have three elements to capture user email. We have a label, an input element, and then the validation tag helper for email. And the same is true for password. We have a label, input element, and then validation tag helper. And then finally, to get the remember me checkbox, we have a label here. And then we are using an input element along with the HTML helper display name for. And then finally, the submit button. The text on the submit button is login. When this button is clicked, the login view is submitted to the server using a post request. So our next step is to include a pair of login actions within our account controller. Notice the register action. We've got a pair of methods. The first one here responds to HTTP GET, whereas this one 
response to HTTP POST. We want to do the same thing for the login action. Let's actually make a copy of these two action methods and then change the bits that are required. When a GET request is issued to slash account slash login, this is the action method that we want to execute. So let's change the name of the action to login. As you can see, all this method is doing is returning a view. Which view is it going to return? Since the name of the action method is login, by default, it's going to return this login view. After we fill this view with the required data and submit this form to the server, we want this action method to handle that post request. So the first thing that we want to do is change the action method name to login. This method is going to receive login view model as the parameter because if we take a look at our login view, the model is login view model. So when this view is submitted, this method receives login view model instead of register view model. If the model state is valid, we want to sign the user in. We don't need to create a new identity user object. So let's get rid of this code first. To sign in and sign out a user, we use sign in manager instead of user manager. Sign in manager is already injected into this controller using constructor injection right here. So let's use the injected service to sign in the user. So instead of user manager here, let's use sign in manager. On this sign in manager service instance, we have password sign in async method which we use to sign the user in. There are two overloads of this method. We're going to use the second overloaded version which takes four parameters. The first one is the username. We get the username from the email property of our model object because in our case, email is the username. And then the password, again, we have password property on the model object. The third parameter is a Boolean parameter, is persistent. We use this parameter to specify if we want to create a session cookie or a persistent cookie. The value for this parameter comes from remember me property on the model object. We use the final parameter to specify if we want to lock the account on failure. We'll discuss account lockouts in our upcoming videos in the series. For now, let's set it to false. Now, notice from the IntelliSense, this password sign in async method returns sign in result object and we are storing that in this variable and that object has got this boolean property succeeded which is set to true if the sign in is successful. So if we have successfully signed in the user, we want to redirect him to the index action of our home controller. We don't need this line of code anymore. So let's delete that. If this succeeded property is false, that means the provided username password combination is invalid and we want to display that error to the user. For that, let's add it to the model state using add model error method. The key is an empty string and the error message is invalid login attempt. This for each loop is not required. So let's delete that. If the model state is valid, we try to sign the user in. If sign in is successful, we redirect the user to the index section of the home controller. If the sign in attempt is unsuccessful, we display this message invalid login attempt. If the model state is not valid, we re-render the login view and the user get to see the validation errors. So with all these changes in place, let's run our project. Now let's click on this login link. Notice we navigate to slash account slash login and we see our login view. Now if I try to log in without providing a value for email and password, we see required validation errors. Let's provide a valid email but an invalid password. Notice we see the error invalid login attempt. Now let's provide a valid password. Notice we are signed in and we see this logout link. When I click on the logout link, we are logged out and see the register and login links instead of the logout link. Now let's understand the primary difference between a session cookie and a persistent cookie. For that, first let's launch browser developer tools. At the moment, 
I am on the application tab and looking at the cookie section. Right now, we only have one cookie and that is the ASP.NET Core anti-forgery cookie. We'll discuss the significance of this cookie in our upcoming videos in this series. Now let's try to log in. Notice I have not checked this remember me checkbox and then try to log in. In this case, it's actually creating a session cookie. Notice this second cookie that just appeared, aspnetcore.identity.application. This is the login cookie. When we submitted our username and password to the server, the server validated the username password combination and logged us in. To indicate that we are logged in, this cookie is issued by the server to the browser. So every time now we send a new request, either by clicking on these navigation links or the buttons within the pages of our application, this cookie is sent with each request to the server. This cookie is then used by the server to know that we are already authenticated and logged in. This cookie can either be a session cookie or a persistent cookie depending on whether the remember me checkbox is checked or not. We just logged in without selecting remember me checkbox. So the cookie that we have right here is a session cookie and a session cookie is immediately lost if we close the browser window. And if this cookie is not present in the subsequent request that we send to the server, the server will not know that we are logged in. Let's actually prove this. So when I close this browser, we are going to lose this cookie. Let me relaunch the browser and navigate to our application. Let's also launch the browser developer tools so we know what's going on. Notice our login cookie is gone and as a result, the server does not know that we are already logged in. And because of that, we see these two links, register and login instead of the logout link. Now let's try to log in again. This time, let's select this checkbox, remember me. We are logged in. Notice the link here, it changed it to logout. We also have our login cookie created. This time, we have a persistent cookie, a permanent cookie. This means even when I close this browser window, we are not going to lose this cookie because this is now saved to my machine. So when I relaunch the browser window and issue a request to our application, it's going to send this login cookie automatically with that request. So the server knows we are logged in and it's going to display this logout link instead of register and login. Let's actually prove this. Let me close the browser window relaunch the browser and let's navigate to our application URL. Let's also launch browser developer tools. Notice we still have our login cookie aspnetcore.identity.application and because this cookie is present the server knows we are logged in and we see the logout link here. So the main difference is a session cookie is permanently deleted when the browser window is closed. On the other hand, a persistent cookie is not deleted when the browser window is closed. If you want the persistent cookie to be immediately deleted, simply log out of the application. When I click on this logout link, this login cookie will be immediately removed, irrespective of whether it's a persistent cookie or a session cookie. Look at this. When I click the logout link, Notice the login cookie is immediately deleted. We are logged out of the application and we see the register and login links instead of the logout link. Here is the login view code and then the two login actions. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.